Hey YouTube, doing another project here uh, on the hot air collector, solar collector. As with all these projects, there are ideas that you can follow. I'm doing them at my own risk. They're not UL tested, but they give you some ideas if you want to follow them. I'm taking my own risks with these. If you want to follow them, go ahead. But you're assuming your own responsibility. With that said, we'll get started with this. I built this in another video. It's a passive solar collector. And now I'm going to make it a active solar collector. There's a lot of different types of these collectors. One of the websites I found useful was Simply Solar. Just Google it and then follow to their website they have a lot of different designs a lot of good ideas that you can learn from um, there this one's a fiberglass screen type collector the absorber is a fiberglass screen you can use aluminum screen some of the best designs have like the uh, they use downspouts for the absorber, the heat absorbers, or these screens. You see a lot of them made out of beer cans and stuff like that. Some with just a, just a box even. Some of the basic rules are you want the least amount of the least amount of air resistance you want the hot air collected towards the back of the box that's another good design not towards the glazing in front I use plexiglass on this there's cheaper Glazings that you can get, like at uh, Home Depot, you might have to order it, but it's used on green houses. It's a clear, corrugated, like siding that they use on green houses. It's a lot cheaper, but I just built this as an experiment to see if it would even work. And it's just, it, this is just a small windowsill hot air collector, and it works really good as passive. I was doing some testing and I was getting temperatures up to 145 degrees so I'm going to add a little CPU fan to this and try to circulate some of that air through there a little quicker. Let's get started. First thing you're going to need is a, a little CPU fan. The squirrel type fans seem to work the best. They get a little bit better airflow. This is only 0.3 amps so I won't be using hardly any electricity. Um, it's just 12 volt low voltage. The rule of thumb is for the size of collector the square foot you should have 2.5 to 3 cubic feet per minute this one's only 10 and my collector here is only uh, 2 by 4 so it's 8 square feet so this one's a little shy but I just want to get a little air flowing going through there see what it'll do and it'll give you an idea on how to build these and how to use the fans Of course with these the bigger the better the more hot air you're going to collect but I just wanted one I put I'm putting this in my my wife works at home in a small bedroom so she has the electric heaters going all the time the bedroom's cold for some reason and I think it's kind of because it's off by itself so I put this in the window she said even with no fan on it's heating the room up 
when the sun's out. I took this fan out of a uh, Harbor Freight, one of those little defroster heaters. Or you can pick them up on eBay, they're about $10-$11. When you search on eBay, just search for uh, CPU blower. I was searching CPU fan, and I got a lot of those square type fans, CPU fans. Another thing you're going to need is the, this is called, uh, you can get these off eBay, and you want to search snap disc control fan. What it is, it's just a thermal switch. This particular one will disconnect the fan at 120 degrees. Actually, it'll connect the fan at 120 degrees, and then when it gets, after it cools off a bit down to 90 degrees, it will disconnect and turn the power off till it heats up again to 120. They have different ones. I'm I thought this would be a good range for this little project I'm doing. These are really cheap too. They're only like 4 bucks for this. It's 120 volt, but it'll work for the small 12 volt fan. It's just it's a thermal switch. Here's the bottom of my collector, and then the top. I found from testing that right up around the top here is where it gets really hot. You know, I was getting up to about 145 degrees, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut a hole. This one's made out of styrofoam, the size of this. And I'm going to mount that probably right in here somewhere. So let's get started and we'll get that done. Then, of course, my CPU fan will be down here. I'm going to mount that and I'll show you how to wire everything. Got the fan mounted on the bottom. I'm just using this aluminum tape, sealed it up really good around all the edges and it's it's on there really good that aluminum tape really holds good now I'm gonna cut a hole for the top for the switch and then I'm just gonna use the aluminum tape on that if you wanna see how I built this so hot hot air collector it's in video one I did it with just a utility knife. It's all made out of this foil backed styrofoam. Okay, I cut the hole for the switch and lined it with aluminum tape. Of course, this is this part that goes inside because that'll be that this is the sensor for the switch. And I'm just going to put that in and aluminum tape that on. Okay, there it is. We got the switch mounted. Pretty simple. So now we'll wire this. I dug this power pack out of a electrical pile of stuff I just kept. These are pretty handy. This one's uh, 120 volt, so I can plug it into the wall, and then the output is 12 volt and 2.5 amps. So this will be good enough to run the CPU fan. It's always good to save these things. You never know when you'll need them. So I'll be able to plug just plug this into the home 120 outlet or because it has the same connection that I'm going to be using for 
my battery pack that I made from a Harbor Freight drill which is right here so I'll be able I could just use this battery pack also in case of an emergency I could if the electricity went out I could charge this with my uh, monocrystalline panels that I have set up outside you're also so what I needed to buy was a female and this is I got this at Radio Shack it's a size M DC power jack the, it's a size M coaxial and this is the female part you'll need that and then of course you'll need the male which is the same size M coaxial DC power plug that looks like that now I learned that from you probably want to use like a 20 gauge wire for these connections they can't handle much bigger than that I did manage to hook one up with a 18 gauge wire but it was a kind of a pain in the butt so 16 or a 20 gauge would be better so what we're doing first I'm gonna wire this switch I bought some of these you can buy these at anywhere Home Depot Lowe's in the electrical department but you just strip your wire stick it in and crimp it down and this will of course get connected to the switch and I'll do another one and these will be all positive wires because it's the switch is all this switch is going to do is disconnect and connect this as it hits certain temperatures so that'll run down to the fan one of these will run down to the positive on the fan I'm gonna solder that and shrink wrap it and then the other side will run directly to the power plug which that'll all have to be soldered together and I'm gonna put a female I'm going to put the female, wire that into the female part. The center pin of this I'm using as the positive. And then this outer pin will be the negative. Okay, I got this so you can kind of see how it's going to be now. There's the two positives that run from the switch. And though that will, one of them will hook to the positive on the fan, and then we'll just we'll have a short negative running to the female connector. So the power's going to be coming in. We'll start on this side. It's easier to understand. We'll plug our power in. Of course, we'll have the positive negative hooked to this female. The power will be coming in. One will go to the negative of the fan. Of course, the positive will run up to the switch. When it heats up to 120 degrees, it's disconnected until it hits 120. And then that will connect the power and it'll run down to the fan and turn the fan on. This will be hooked to the positive of the fan. It's pretty easy. I'll get all this soldered together and shrink wrapped and we'll be back. Okay, we got this soldered and then this plastic. Make sure you put the cover plastic cover on before on the wires before you solder it but this just screws right on to this piece here and that'll be done now I'm going to solder all these wires 
together. Make sure you put your shrink wrap on if you're using it before you solder. Okay, we got everything wired. I still have to heat up the heat shrink, but I just wanted to show you the fans running right now. I just put these two wires together for now till we set it up in the sun and get some heat to trigger it, but there's a lot of air pumping out. I made a cord with two males so I could plug one in here and then one into my battery pack right here. Everything's working for testing right now. I will. I'm going to have to wait for a sunny day to do a little testing. I'll add that to this video. Okay, YouTube, I took some of this tubing. It's split tubing, quarter inch. And I just cleaned up the wires a little bit. Here's my female end. And I just kind of aluminum taped it. Got everything hooked up. I'm gonna, this video is getting too long, so I'm gonna do another video on some testing and how it works. So, thanks for watching, everyone. There's the basic idea on how you do an active solar hot air collector. Thanks.